Nestled within the city of San Francisco is a small but important neighborhood called Castro. The Castro is the center of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community in the city, largely contributing to San Francisco's reputation as the LGBT capital of the world. The Castro is filled with popular bars, restaurants, cafes, bookstores, and specialty shops that cater to a sophisticated, wealthy, and primarily gay male population. How did this little neighborhood become such an epicenter for gay people? The LGBT Historical Society can answer many questions about the history of the Castro. After large gay populations began residing in the Barcadero and South of Market area, many trickled into the Castro to cultivate a more upper-class gay community. The South of Market area was home to a rougher crowd of gay men called Leathermen, and the Castro became home for the young, good-looking, and wealthy. Walking around the Castro today, one sees a variety of businesses, from clothing shops to organic grocery stores to nightclubs. But whatever the business, you can't help but notice a highly sexualized theme. Restaurants with suggestive names, scantily clad mannequins and shop windows, and more sex shops and adult video stores than you can count fill the main drag of Castro Street. This prevalence of sex, sex, and more sex may give outsiders the impression that the gay community is oversexual, if not perverse. Is this all the gay community is concerned about? Casual sex, porn DVDs, and buff men in underwear? To investigate this issue, we decided to talk to Castro locals, gay men who inhabit and embody the neighborhood. Bryce Erickson is a gay man and employee of an overtly sexual cookie shop called Hot Cookie. Hot Cookie is famous for their snug-fitting red underwear, their wall of semi-nude photos of men clad in Hot Cookie underwear, and their tasty penis-shaped chocolate-covered macaroon cookies. Bryce said that in a way the assumption that gay males are very sexual is true. We're guys, so of course we're going to be sexual, he said. In the media, he said, we're mostly depicted as sluts. There are those people and that's great, but we're not all like that. A man named Jeff Henderson was sitting outside of a coffee shop when we asked him how he thought the Castro and gay men in general were perceived by the public. Jeff told us that when the media covers pride marches and events in the Castro, they focus on the most outrageous people in a crowd, the most scantily clad, or the men dressed in drag. They don't show the regular looking people, he said. Alonzo Marcus was enjoying a cigarette in front of a bar called Moby Dick. Alonzo is a recent transplant to the Castro, having just moved from the East Coast. He said he loves the Castro, but feels it is not a fair representation of gay men. As an African-American, living in a neighborhood that exalts young, upper-class Caucasians, people who don't fit that mold can be forgotten. He also said that the perception that gay men are extremely sexual is in part true, but thinks the media latches onto this too much. He said, it's not untrue, but it's less true than they make it seem. Those interviewed seem to hold the attitude that men will be men, men are sexual, and when men pursue other men, there are fewer obstacles than in heterosexual relationships, and sex happens more frequently. But there is a more serious side to the gay community that cannot be overlooked and is an equally important part of their group identity, the incredible ability to organize and fight the discrimination that has plagued them. Harvey Milk is one of the first and most famous leaders for this cause. Milk was the first openly gay man to hold a public office in California when he was elected to the San Francisco Board of Supervisors in 1977. His leadership in the Castro helped bring awareness to homosexual rights in a time when gay people were highly discriminated against. Milk was tragically assassinated in 1978 by former supervisor Dan White. Today, homosexuals still fight discrimination, currently struggling for the right to marry. California Proposition 8, which took away the right for same-sex couples to marry, passed in November 2008 by a narrow majority and upset many straight and gay people around the state, but arguably no community was hit harder than the Castro. Cause it's all so good